Hi, I'm Jenny, and thank you so much for stopping by my channel, Designs with Paper. It has been a hot minute since I did an on-camera introduction, but I'm back. I felt like doing hair and makeup today, so it was a good day to shoot an introduction. The video I have for you today is the Mission Inspiration May 2021 prompt. It took me a while to figure out how to incorporate the theme the ingredients and the color palette together. I was really stumped on this one. Um, I don't really try to plan out the mission inspiration prompts. I just try to gather together the ingredients and something to go along with the theme and see what happens when I play. So check it out. Let me know what you think. Leave me a comment. I respond, I reply to all of the comments I receive. Give me a thumbs up if you like it. Give me a thumbs down if you don't like it. Share my channel, invite other people to subscribe. I would love to have more friends watching my videos. Thanks so much for stopping by and have a great day. Okay, so the May 2021 Mission Inspiration Art Journal page prompt. The theme is Finding the Light. The colors are teal, purple, and gray. The list of ingredients are labels, markers, found objects, clock, and paint. So I will be going ahead and working on this piece of paper that fits inside of the art journal I have created for the Mission Inspiration prompts for this year. I am using Distress Ink acrylic paints. I have Broken China, Sealess Preserves, and Pumice Stone, I think, for, our, for my colors tonight. So the first thing I want to do is take this Pumice Stone and put it on top of this paper. Now, the paper I'm using tonight is not the mixed media paper I have been using. It is actually a, a piece of paper from a pad I found on clearance at Hobby Lobby. It was a pad of paper that said it was for acrylic paint or painting. Um, it is a little bit thicker than mixed media paper and it has a much um, um, toothier texture. I don't know what the right um, phrase is there. I kind of thought that the paper would have already been prepped to take acrylic ink. So I did not pre-gesso the paper and I 100% should have because it is just soaking up this paint. I'm having to add a little bit of water from my water cup there just to get the paint to spread across this paper. Now I'm not looking for anything super perfect. You know, I just want this gray to go down as my base color. Sorry about the autofocus. My camera seems to be having issues picking up or the gray against the gray or something. I don't know. I probably should have worked on a different colored surface for the background paint anyway. So anyway, I'm just going ahead and um, getting this, this whole piece of paper color covered rather, wow, in gray paint. Um, this video is a real time video. I have edited out the cleaning up part. So I have one color down and I have one um, ingredient and now I will add the second ingredient. There are a few things I wish, or I, I don't know if I wish I had done differently, but if I had thought or pre-planned this outside of gathering materials, I might have done a little differently. And we'll talk about that at the end. So I am going to apply this clock. I just something I printed out um, on regular printer paper, and I am going to adhere it to this um, gray painted background with a matte gel. I don't want it to be shiny. I don't want it to be gloopy. I finally finished using up all of that um, Mod Podge, which I didn't really love. I just felt like it was sticky and, and kind of gross. So now I'm just going to use this. Um, it's this Liquitex. It's a matte medium or a medium. Yeah, matte medium. And I put it all over the back of the clock. And now I will add a layer to the, the paper. And hopefully that will get it to stick down without too many wrinkles. I don't, I'm not looking for a perfection, but I don't want it to be super, super wrinkly. And it actually did go down pretty smooth. I, this is the first time I've ever used this brand of, of matte medium, and I really do like it. I think that 
I will continue to just use this one and try it out and see how I feel about it. But anyway, so now we have this clock completely covered, which makes it non-porous. Um, I printed it on my laser printer, and I don't typically have a problem with that toner peeling or um, rubbing off. But just in case, I added a layer of matte medium over the top of it, and I am going to get a piece of press and seal and put right across the top of that under the lid just to keep it from drying out. So checking down our list, we have the gray, we have the paint, and we have the clock. So the next thing I want to do is introduce this purple, and I'm going to try a brayer. Um, I'm not 100% sure how well it's going to work with the toothiness of this paper. Um, I pulled out a piece of palette paper to use with this paint, um, since I'm going to use the brayer. I don't, I, don't, I don't know if it was necessary, but I felt like it was at the time, so we're just going with it. <laughs> And I am, you know, I've got that, that brayer completely covered in paint, and it really is not going on that paper very well. And I'm not sure if it is the, the tooth of the paper or if the paper is like, I, I don't know what the paper's made out of. I'm not sure because it seems to be going on the printer paper just fine, the clock, but not really on that background paper. So I am going to go ahead and add a little bit of more purple paint to my palette paper and then just use a paintbrush to finish um, covering the bottom half of this page in, in purple paint. Now, one thing I wish I had done differently would have been to put the purple and then the blue paint down and then add the clock and then added the paint over the top of the clock if I felt it was necessary then. Um, when I am doing the Mission Inspiration Art Journal pages, I typically just gather all of the list of ingredients and the colors and um, a focal image or a quote, and then I just kind of work in the moment. I don't typically plan beyond there, which is why I say if I was going to plan it out a little bit more, I might have done or I wish I had done. But that's not to say I don't like how the page turned out. It's just in hindsight, maybe I would have done it differently. So that brush is really getting the paint on that paper really well. <laughs> a little bit too well. I didn't want to completely cover that clock, at least not at this point. So I did take a damp baby wipe and wipe some of that back. So now we have our clock, we have our paint, and we have purple, and we have gray. The next thing I want to do is introduce the teal, the broken, and I think it's broken china. And, and this is where I say, I wish I had put the clock on second because then I could have blended it in a little bit more. And maybe even instead of using paint, just use distress inks or yeah, just use my distress inks because they tend to blend a little bit better than the paint does. Um, and I did think, well, you know what, maybe I will try adding this paint on with this you know, this um, used up gift card. So I'm going to add a little bit of that, that aqua paint or that teal paint to the palette paper and kind of slide the edge of this gift card through it and see if it makes drag marks. And it does, and it's fine. It's, it's not, I don't know, it's not really what I was going for necessarily, but also I didn't, um, the blue paint was more of a, um, a means to an end. It wasn't the end result. It was just, and and that will I that will become clear on the next step. But I didn't really love it, and um, I thought, well, I don't know. Let's just add some more. Um, the next part, the next thing I want to do is stencil off some of this paint, which is why I say that the blue was more, or the teal was more of a means to an end than a final product. And I have this um sunshine or sun rays stencil um, from Tim Holtz and I want to take a damp baby wipe and wipe the blue the teal paint from the sunburst off and it worked really really well I didn't wait for the paint to dry and, and I liked it but what I noticed is that by putting the paint on with the um, gift card it didn't really have the coverage I was looking for so I cleaned off my paintbrush and just added a little bit more paint to that paper. And I am going to um, brush that out 
and then I will take the stencil back over it and remove that, that paint through the stencil again. And this is where using inks might have been better than paint because I can blend that purple and that blue together and get a nice kind of fade instead of just like this cut horizon. But um, at this point, I kind of sort of knew where I was going, at least for the most part. So I didn't worry too much about that horizon line. I knew I was going to kind of blend it in and cover it up in a couple of minutes. It started to kind of come together in my brain. I will tell you, when I saw the prompts for this mission at the beginning of the month, I could not um, come up with a, a plan forward. The, the theme, finding the light, really, and the color combination was just really not, were not working that well in my brain. You know, and it's the last month of school, and there's a lot of things going on, so it was just kind of crazy. The only thing I could think of was, Dory, just keep swimming, just keep swimming but I didn't really go with it. Okay, so I've moved on to my found object and my found object is this doily. I was looking through my mixed media um, supplies because I will be doing a, a class with some of the young women in our church group next month and I wanted to see what I had that we could use and I found these doilies. Do not even remember buying them, no kidding. But I pulled out this aqua one or this teal one, and I decided I wanted to add my quote to the top of this doily. And my quote reads, even the darkest nights will end and the sun will rise again, which is where I got the idea for that, the sunshine or the sun rays um, stencil. So now I just have to figure out where on this paper I want to put the doily. And I, and I think now, even as I'm watching this, as I'm doing the voiceover, it would have been really cool to put that doily right square in the middle of the clock, maybe cut off some of the outer rings and put the doily in the middle of the clock. But whatever, doesn't matter because we're moving on, right? So I am going to pop open that, that tub of matte medium and put some all over the, the back of this doily. I will leave it hanging off the edge just a little bit, just so it feels like the elements um, are a little more free flowing, not quite so tight and confined, if that makes sense. Maybe that's just the way my brain is, is thinking as I'm watching this and doing the voiceover tonight. I did add a little bit of mixed media, or sorry, mixed media, um, <laughs> gel medium under the edges of the doily. I don't want them to lift, it's a paper doily. And I'm afraid that if it gets caught, it would rip. And I don't really want my, my art journal pages to tear apart. I mean, sometimes I don't mind if the element edges um, lift, but I don't want it to tear. So now I will just use a little bit of the, me the gel medium to add this quote on, trying to get it mostly onto this doily. I think it mostly fits when I get it all in there. The spacing is pretty tight. But it doesn't look terrible. I, I'm okay with how it turns out. And the quote I found as I was getting closer toward the middle of the month, and I had still not attempted this, like the mini mission had come and gone, and I still had not attempted this, this art mission, and I told myself I was doing them all this year. Um, I usually get to about May or June, and then life takes over, and I don't get them done. I said, nope, 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 not happening. So I, I told myself I was doing it. I had to, to find something to um, go with this, this theme, the colors. And as I was scrolling through Pinterest one day, I saw this quote. And so I pinned it to my quote board and then it kind of went with, I figured I could do like a purple to blue to gray and it would kind of look like a, a sunrise or the beginning of a sunrise, especially if I used the sunray stencil. And you know, get the clock in there. It kind of adds to that element of of time moving, and of of dark things ending and good things coming. And I feel like that is kind of um, where we are in the world right now. You know, it's been well over a year since the coronavirus pandemic took over, and we've all been staying at home as much as possible. Um, two of my kids continue to do virtual school the whole school year that um, two high school kids did go back to school hybrid eventually, but I felt like this quote kind of fit. So going down our recipe card, we have all of the colors, we have the theme, 
and we have all of the elements except markers. And at this point, I've realized I don't really love that blue. Like it just didn't cover up enough, the blue on top of the, the purple. So I will take um, a craft sponge, a little piece of a craft sponge. And it's really funny. I bought these, you know, those round craft sponges, I think at Michael's or Hobby Lobby, and I cut it into eight pieces. And then <laughs> when I use it, after the end dries, I just snip it off and keep it. And so this triangle is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. <laughs> I don't know how much longer I am going to be able to get away with using that, that little wedge, but Hey, I am completely using this thing up. What is that phrase? Use it up, do without, make it, or use it up, wear it out, do, make it do or do without. I am going to use up this craft sponge. <laughs> okay. So there I have that blended in more. And we're going down our list. We have the theme, we have the colors, we have all of the ingredients except marker. So now I have some Pit Artist Brush pens. Um, I bought them on Clarence at Hobby Lobby when they changed from making this big, huge barrel to the skinnier barrels. See, still has the yellow Clarence sticker on. I love Clarence sales. <laughs> and these are India ink. And on non porous surfaces, for a minute, you can kind of smear it and get more of a shadow than an actual line. And that's what I'm doing. I'm dabbing my finger on this damp baby wipe and kind of smearing that ink around. And in real life, the gray was fine, but I didn't love it. And as I'm looking at the video, you really can't see that gray at all. It's kind of sort of giving a shadow, but I wanted something a little bit more there, a little bit, a little bit less evasive. I don't know what the right word is there. So I've pulled out the blue and you need a whole lot less blue to get that shadow than you do of the gray. And again, I'm just going to trace all of these, um, phrase lines, the quote lines, so that they look a little bit more like labels, which is another one of the ingredients. Um, I thought about printing this on my actual label maker. Um, but I was already printing out the clock and the prompt page. So I just added that to the, I'll just put it on here. And it's easier for me to change the, the font and the size on my computer than it is on the printer. And for real, I could have made this smaller and it would have been just fine. But anyway, <laughs> so I will go ahead and outline all of the labels on my quote here. And when I am done with the labels, I decided I liked how that looked. So I um, will go around the outside edges of that doily and kind of create a little bit of a shadow around the doily edge as well. And you can see here on that um, sun, the word sun, <laughs> had a little extra blue on there. I was trying to wipe off. The cool thing about India ink is once it's dry, even on non-porous surfaces, it is permanent. Um, it only, you only have just a second to smear this around and kind of create that shadow edge that you're looking, that I was looking for here. So here I'm going to go around the edges of the doily. Um, so if I was going to go back and plan this page with the quote, with the colors, with, with all of the same things, I think what I might do is well, first of all, I would gesso this paper. This is the first time I've used this paper with distress paints and I for sure would gesso the paper. I would still probably put the gray down or maybe even use a gray napkin for the gray color, but then I would use distress ink and blend those inks together. So it was less severe of a, a horizon line and more of just a, a fade. And I think that would give me a better, sunburst look as well. But overall, I like how it turned out. It doesn't have a very dramatic focal point or focal image, but I really do feel like that quote kind of pulled this prompt together for me. So now that I have the blue and the purple and the gray, and I have the theme finding the light, and I have the labels and the markers and the found objects and the clock and the paint, it is time to glue the prompt or the recipe card onto the back of my page. So I will know what I was thinking about when I did this page. And then I will cut that doily off the edge and the page will be done. 
So leave me some feedback. Let me know what you would do differently if you were creating this page. Would you use acrylics? Would you use inks? Would you use watercolors, alcohol inks? And um, paper collage even would be fabulous. I love paper collage for background creating especially. I would love it if you would give me a thumbs up or hey, even a thumbs down. If you don't like what I did, go ahead, give it a thumbs down. YouTube doesn't care. They think all interactions the same. <laughs> go ahead and share my page and subscribe to my page. And thank you so much for stopping by. I can't wait to see you next time. Have a great night.